Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Limited, where we are looking back at 2016. It was a year for flying first, long-awaited regulations came to fruition, the drone industry explodes. I'm Brie Cross, it's January 3rd, 2017, and this is Airborne Limited. 2016 proved to be a year of milestones in so many areas of our aviation and aerospace business. One of the great stories is the beginnings of deliveries of Honda Jet's unique addition to the personal jet family of aircraft. It's been long in coming, but it's been a steady march from early development to certification, production, and delivery. In a business that's been struggling, Honda Jet got the job done. Piper Aircraft introduced their new M600 single-engine turboprop aircraft last year. Piper said they had a vision of developing their M-series aircraft into a new model that could set new standards. The result is their M600, which combined a familiar look with new aerodynamics and avionics to create a proud addition to the Piper line that started with the humble Piper Cub. On a Sunday in July of last year, we all watched as the B-29 named Doc took flight. A group of dedicated people now known as the Friends of Doc started a project to restore the World War II era bomber to flyable condition in 1987. Since then, the struggle to bring this proud aircraft back to life has continued. To see and hear this grand old airplane in flight is awe-inspiring. 2016 proved to be a year where we can actually smile about FAA regulation changes. That's got to be a first. Top of the list would be the final passage into law of new regulations governing the application of third-class medical certificates. We didn't get all we wanted, but it's a step in the right direction for simplifying medical certification for recreational and personal airplane use aviators. Full details of this new system will unfold over the next few months. Also on our good news list is the FAA's willingness to work with EAA to develop supplemental type certificates, which allows avionics design for experimental airplanes to be used in type certificated airplanes. This step in the right direction opens up a new door to safety and utility that has previously been withheld from type certificated aircraft. Added on to the advancement made by EAA is the entire overhaul of FAR 23 certification rules for small aircraft. The innovative new regulation is based on end performance rather than minute details of production. In new aircraft and existing aircraft, these new regulations will reduce costs and promote advancements of new technologies. After the break, 2016 was a breakout year for the drone industry. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Limited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. A subject that's had heavy coverage in our ANN News and Airborne Limited broadcast in 2016 is drones. The most rapid and substantial growth of drones has occurred in the U.S. in what is referred to as small unmanned aerial systems, which are radio-controlled aircraft under the weight of 55 pounds. 2016 started off with a new regulation requiring owners of small drones to be registered with the FAA. We're not sure if that was a good idea, a bad idea, or just an event, but it led to a lot of discussion. On the last day of September, the FAA finally published their regulations involving small drone operation. FAR 101 Subpart E dealt with the definition of recreational drone operation, while FAR 107 covered non-recreational use. FAR 107 also created a remote pilot license now required for anyone that is flying a drone commercially. 
Since their registration began, the FAA has seen over 600,000 drones registered, and Bloomberg said that the market will be nearing $127 billion as we approach the year 2020. They say drones will be used in crop yields, verifying insurance claims, the television and movie industry, news gathering, and who knows what else. Even though we're looking back at 2016 today, we're excited to introduce a new member of our team, Laura Hudson, who will be hosting with us in 2017. She's been working with us at ANN for a couple months now, and today she's going to take you around the patch. Thanks, Bree. I'm excited to be a part of the ANN crew. With so many stories that came out of the aviation industry in 2016, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. SpaceX shares all the details with us while it's happening. Their TICOM-8 mission of May 27th launched a satellite to a super-synchronous transfer orbit of almost 57,000 miles. And then they recovered the booster on their drone ship in the Atlantic. It was nothing less than spectacular. Not to be outdone, when it comes to a live webcast of a space event, on October 5th, Blue Origin, the private space travel company, allowed us to watch as they performed a crew capsule abort separation during an actual launch. Then they added the extra touch, recovering their new Shepard launch vehicle. In March of last year, American astronaut Scott Kelly returned to Earth, setting a record by being the first U.S. astronaut to remain in space for one year. Kelly and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornenko studied the potential for long space travel. Kelly said, we are ready for Mars. U.S. air power is always in transition. In 2016, we saw the last flight of the U.S. Air Force's venerable F-4 Phantom Fighter Jet that has been in service since 1963. But as the old retires, we are introduced to the proposed Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider Bomber. It's called the B-21 to signify its 21st century design. The around-the-world flight of the solar-paneled Solar Impulse 2 aircraft started in March 2015 and concluded in July of last year. Piloted by Patron Picard and project leader Andre Bushberg, the multi-million dollar project was targeted at promoting the use of reusable energy. And I just wanted to add my personal favorite experience of 2016 with the Aero News team. Back in November, I had the opportunity to go with ANN to MBAA and the DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. At DeLand, I hopped in the STEMI S12. It's an amazing glider and I'm hoping to catch a flight sometime in 2017. Well, that's today's trip around the patch. Back to you, Bree. Thanks, Laura. After these messages, we look back at the loss of aviation greats and look forward to the future. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Along with all the upbeat happenings in aviation in the year 2016, we also had a few losses. We guess it could be said that the losses of Bob Hoover and John Glenn were inevitable, but it was still hard to take. Bob Hoover, once described as the greatest stick and redder man who ever lived, was more than a legend to us here at ANN. He was a friend. Anyone who ever saw his amazing aerobatic performances could easily think that nothing could be better, yet you only had to spend a few minutes talking with Bob to understand that Bob Hoover, as a man, exceeded his own performances. In some respects, astronaut and later Senator John Glenn was another one of these individuals in aviation who not only excelled in his skills off the ground, he represented one of the really good guys in the aerospace industry. He became a hero for being the first American in orbit, but John Glenn, the person, never saw it that way. 
Both these men served our country and should be remembered for who they were first and then for what they did. In looking to the future, ANN is expanding to the point that we're pushing our own limits. Things we have accomplished in 2016, such as our expanded innovation preview programming and coverage of special events, will progress even further in the coming year. As if our Airborne Limited is not enough, we're expanding into new video programming, where Airborne Limited will specialize in specific subject areas. Our first example of this will be the introduction of our AMA drone report, which will concentrate on the topic of recreational drone operation. There is an end game to our planned expansion. This end game could be one of the most powerful tools that we offer the industry to help it build consensus, to help it build community, and to help it define and use its voice powerfully once again. An example of our drive to rejuvenate, defend, and invigorate aviation is our participation in programming regarding the unbelievable story of the planned demise for the Santa Monica Airport. As always, we're in the midst of the battle and we'll be bringing reports from the battlefield in the near future. ANN will grow, ANN will innovate, and it's going to be a wild ride. You're invited to take that ride along with us. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Limited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.